Hello everyone, Rihanna Dignard here and welcome back to my channel. We are continuing on with our photography series and the past two videos we've been talking all about the history and science of color photography processes and today we're finally going to develop some film. Specifically, we're going to be developing and talking about C the C41 film process, which was introduced by Kodak in 1972 and remains one of the most popular film processes today. In fact, several darkroom labs where you can send your film to get processed actually just have automatic machines that will process it without anybody having to do anything. I wish I had one of those, but no, we just get to use uh, pure, pure human labor for developing our film in our sketchy bathroom dark room, which we're going to be visiting again today. So let's go ahead and get started with learning about C41 film. So for just an overview of today's video, I'm gonna first talk about the basic composition of C41 films, and then we're gonna head over, take a field trip to, again, the sketchy bathroom uh, dark room, and we're gonna actually process them, and I'll walk you through that and talk about all about the science about that. Um, but first, I did wanna start off by showing um, my beautiful Roloflex camera, which is the film, which was what shot the film that I'll be developing today. Um, and I wanna give a quick shout out to my husband's coworker who just casually had this around her house for years and wasn't using it and wanted to give it to somebody who uh, would really use it. I love this camera. It is such an amazing gift and it is so much fun to shoot. So thank you to my husband's coworker for this camera. And I'm excited to tell you all about C41 film composition. So first you start with an acetate back. Um, or a polyester back, that is the plastic backing on the roll of film. Then you're gonna have three light sensitive layers, a red sensitive layer, a green sensitive layer, and a blue sensitive layer. Now between the blue sensitive layer and the red slash green sensitive layers is actually a yellow layer that is made up of silver or yellow dyes. This yellow layer serves to remove any blue sensitivity from the layers that are supposed to be red and green sensitized because all silver emulsions um, which are commonly used in film, are always at least a little bit sensitive to blue light. And we want our red and green sensitive layers to be only sensitive to red and green light. So we wanna remove any of that extra blue light that could get there. In each color sensitive layer, there are also dye couplers. So remember these react during, dye, during development and form the cyan, magenta, and yellow dyes we need for the subtractive color process to occur. And if you're a little confused about what subtractive color processes are, go check out my previous video where I talk about them. So the blue sensitive layer is gonna contain yellow dye couplers, the green sensitive layer is gonna contain magenta dye couplers, and the red sensitive layer is gonna contain cyan dye couplers. So these are just kind of the basics of the film and different films like you have Kodak Gold 200 or Portra 400 or Cinestill 800T, which yeah, that's the C41 process film, are all gonna have slightly different variations to them that are gonna lend their different characteristic um, image quality when you shoot them, or different cast or different tones. But those are the basics of having three sense, co different color sensitive layers, some sort of filter which prevents the blue light uh, from reaching those red or green sensitive layers, um, and usually some protective coatings that will prevent all of that from getting scratched off. So when that film gets exposed to light and gets developed, as I'll talk about here in a second, that's where the magic happens and color photography can occur. Now also when you're looking at colored film, and actually let me go grab my binder of negatives that's just chilling right here. Um, you'll actually see that the colored film is kind of orange in color. And this won't actually affect the image or is not part of the image, but it's part of the film and many films will also will actually have an orange coating on them in order to correct any optical um, inaccuracy or inadequacies in the dye, but this does not affect the final color. So now we've learned a little bit about the composition of C41 film. We're gonna head over to the darkroom to see how to develop it and how that science works. Hello and welcome to the dark room. Color film processing is very sensitive to temperature, so we first have to have a hot water bath to keep our chemicals at the right temperature. Then we're gonna load up our rolls, and I am loading up Kodak Gold 120 that I shot on my Roloflex into this light tight canister via a dark bag. We don't want any light getting to our film still because it hasn't been developed and is still light sensitive. 
After I load this up, we're going to apply the developer. Just like for our black and white film, our developer comes along and develops the silver based photographic emulsion on it. What this means is that our developer has a bunch of extra electrons, which is called a reducing agent in chemistry, and is actually going to give up some of those electrons to our silver halide, reducing it into silver and making crystals that are more optically dense and that are going to form the image. Color film takes it one step further because we don't just need a silver or non-silver image to create black and white, we also have to use those dye couplers. The developer, now that it has given up electrons and chemically reduced the silver, is now oxidized because it's less, got less electrons. The oxidized developer now can react with those dye couplers in each of the color sensitive layers and create little spots of dye where the silver has been exposed. Then there's bleach and fixer, I'm using a combo bath called Blix. Unlike black and white film where that solid silver created the image we see and we want to get rid of just the unexposed silver, here we want all of the silver gone and we just want our image in the form of dyes. So the bleach converts all the solid silver into silver halide and the fixer washes it away. And now we have our color image and I'm just going ahead and rinsing up our film real quick and then you will see our color negatives. If I didn't use this combo two bath of just a fic developer and then a bleach fixer combination, you would actually have to wash your film again, stabilize it, and then rinse it a final time for it to come undone. So here is our colored film. I'm gonna go ahead and squeegee this off, let it dry, and then I will see you back in the normal recording studio, I guess. That was a fun trip to the dark room, and it really doesn't ever get old, like, developing film, having it go in, like, and coming out with, like, images. It is a crazy magical scientific experience. One thing I did want to just put a note on again at the very end is that temperature really does matter for color processing. This is because different the developer, the Blix, works optimally at a certain temperature. And in addition, the different sensitive, color sensitive layers of the film actually will develop at different speeds. So if you don't develop at the correct temperature, you can end up with color shifting or where there might be like more of a red cast or a green cast on your image because you didn't develop at the right temperature and one of the color sensitive layers developed faster than the other ones. So that's kind of cool and interesting. You have to be really careful with the temperature for your color development, which is not so much as a factor in black and white development. I hope you enjoyed this video and getting to process some film with me. Uh, today's fun fact we're gonna rate is that actually if you go back and develop like expired or old rolls of film that got shot and never developed, um, there might be some weird color shifting that occurs because the different photosensitive layers will break down at different rates over different times. So that results in some color shifting as well. Be sure to rate that fun fact on a scale of one to 10 in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, check me out on Instagram. We've got some, a couple more photography videos coming up guys and keep it sciencey.